Hey, it's John Hink again. I, I realized that I did a video on how to add MSDB Cloud Tier to MSDP, but I didn't do how to set up MSDP itself. So all you need to do is go to storage and select add, select media server deduplication pool. Once you get to adding MSDP storage server, you just gotta pick the media server you wanna add it to, select it, and then you put in some credentials. These are credentials you can use, they're kind of internalized, so pick a pick a good username, but it's you'll probably never ever have to use these credentials again, just FYI. Click next. When you go back into here, next thing is you wanna pick the storage path you've prepared. So if you're doing a build your own, that's the path you use. For more information on setting a build your own, check the documentation, it has directions on how to set up a build your own storage pool for appliances. You wouldn't be here because they take care of it in their initial setup. Next thing is encryption, right? Well, let's say we wanna use a key group name. All I gotta do is put it in there, click enable encryption, and I can use KMS. Now here's a step where I can add an additional media server. So I'm gonna pick another one of the servers and have it also be able to write to the same storage target. Up next, I just simply need to review this. Everything looks good, I can click save. Now what is it doing right now? It's actually going in and setting up the storage server. It is going in and on that file system you specified, it is gonna go on there and create the DDoP storage. It's going to set up everything it needs to do to do MSTP. And once this returns in just a few moments, it will come back and the storage server is created. Now at this point, I could go add that cloud tier like I showed you earlier, but now I'm gonna add a local disk pool. For this, I just have to give the disk pool a name. It's an arbitrary pool name. I just pick something that's gonna make sense to you. You can also do things like limit IO streams. If you don't wanna overload the local disk pool, you can put, I'm gonna do 10, right? Once you've done that, um, you just have to go in and commit this disk pool. And just, you know, the next step is to go in and review this. Now, this is the part that if you were building a cloud one, this is where you could do add volume and do a cloud one. But for this case, we're just gonna use the local block disk storage pool. We pick that volume. I'm not gonna do any replication targets, but if you were gonna do replication targets, what well, this would be a step where you can pick this other server in a different domain that you want to be able to replicate data to. Now for the disk pool, I just gotta click finish. Takes a couple seconds and there you go. Now, last thing to do is I got it somewhere to send backups to is a storage unit. So I just create a storage unit. Once again, these perfectly logical. And this allows me to help sort out where I put things and you can do how many concurrent jobs on one. I hit next on this. And then I pick the disk pool that the storage unit is going to go to, which is the one I just created. I can make it on demand only if I want to, but I'm not gonna. And this is where I could pick like maybe only use one server, but I'm gonna let that back up automatically select that. Finally, just review, hit save. There we go. You are all set up now for deduplication with MSDP. I'm John Hink. Thanks for taking the time to listen to me, and we'll talk again later.